Hallelujah. Come on, it's the highest praise. Hallelujah. The fragrance of my worship, it rose up to the Father. Noises, thunders, lightnings were the response to my worship. The fragrance of my worship, it rose up to the Father. Noises, thunders, lightnings were the response to my worship. For first it was fragrant, then it turned to fire. My worship is my weapon. This is how I win my battle. See, first it was fragrant. First it was fragrant. Then it turned to fire. Then it turned to fire. My worship is my word. My worship is my word. This is how I win my battle. This is how I win my battle. Oh, oh, sing. The fragrance of my, the the fragrance of my worship. Sing it rose. We rose up to the fire. Noises, thunders, like Noises, thunder and lightning. What the rest? What the rest must do. My the worship. fragrance of my the fragrance of my worship rose up to the fire. Voices, thunders, earthquakes. Voices, thunder, and earthquakes. But the rest was the first it was great. First it was great. Then it turned to fire. Then it turned to fire. My worship is my will. My worship is my will. This is how I win my battle. This is how I win my battle. She first it was great. First it was great. Then it turned, then it turned. Then it turned to fire. My worship is my way. My worship is my way. This is how I win my battle. This is how I win my battle. Oh, see, first it was fragrant. First it was fragrant. Then it turned to fire. Then it turned to fire. My worship is my way. My worship is my way. This is how I win my battle. This is how I win my battle. Well, this is how I win, win, win. This is how I. The smoke of my worship released. Upon me. Sing, this is how I win, win. This is how I win, win, win. This is how I win. The smoke of my worship. The smoke of my worship. Red, red, upon the earth. This is how I win, win, win. This is how I win, win, win. This is how I win. The smoke of my worship. The smoke of my worship. Red, upon the earth. This is how I win, This is how I win, win. This is how I win. The smoke of my worship. The smoke of my worship rings upon the earth. This is how I win. This is how I win. This is how I win. The smoke of my worship. The smoke of my worship rings upon the earth. This is how I win. This is how I win. This is how I win. The smoke of my worship. The smoke of my worship rings upon the earth. Sing, this is how I win, win. This is how I win, win, win. This is how I win. The smoke of my worship. The smoke of my worship rings upon the earth. This is how I win, win, win. This is how I win, 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 win. This is how I win. The smoke of my worship. The smoke of my worship. This is how I win. This is how I win. This is how I win. The smoke of my worship. Smoke of my worship. Rain. Upon the earth. First it was fragrant. First it was fragrant. Then it turned to fire. Then it turned to fire. My worship is my way. My worship is my way. This is how I win my battle. This is how I win. 
to see. Open their hands to see. Come on, begin to talk to him. 
begin to man make moves now. Okay, go kappa. Begin to thank God. Begin to bless His name. Father, we thank you. We bless you for your presence. Thank you, Father God, what you're doing at this moment. Thank you for touching us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I see someone with pain in their back, in their spine. The Lord is healing it. The Lord is healing it. Who is that? The Lord is healing it in your spine. In your spine. I see somebody here. Your heel is being healed. It's being healed. Is being healed. Is being healed. Then somebody else always have a sleepless night. Deliverance has come. I say deliverance has come. The Bible says, Among Zion, there shall be deliverance, there shall be holiness. I cancel every visitation, ungodly visitation in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Mighty God, we bless you. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody clap your hands and give God praise. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Come on, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Father, we bless you. We give you praise and glory and honor. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name. You may be seated if you can. Wow, what an awesome. Worship and praise today. Father, we thank you. Mighty God, we bless you. Leave them on the floor. Leave them there. Leave them there. Leave them there. Don't quit to get up. God is still doing something. Amen. God is doing. Father, we thank you. Please get them up. God is working. Leave them. Leave them. Awesome. Glory to God. Well, I, I greet you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, yeah, they see here. Those angels are here. They see 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 here. You see, I pray the Lord open your eyes to see. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you. Father, we thank you. Even deliverance is happening right now. Deliverance is happening. Deliverance is happening. Deliverance is happening. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. Mighty God, we bless you. Father, we give you praise and we give you glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' name. We bless you. Father, we bless you. Come on, someone say, Father, I thank you. Come on, someone say, Heavenly Father, I thank you. Heavenly Father, I bless your holy name. Father, I thank you. I declare with my mouth, there's no one like you. Heavenly Father, I ask you, what you have started, I ask you to finish it. In me and to me, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Give me the zeal. Give me the zeal. Give me the divine energy to run the race that is set before me. Give me divine strength to run the race that is set before me. To run fast in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father. Give me divine wisdom. Say, Heavenly Father, give me spirit of wisdom, spirit of understanding, spirit of knowledge, spirit of might, spirit of the fear of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Anything in my life that wants to slow me down, I ask you today to remove it. To remove them in the mighty name of Jesus.
Say, I rebuke, I rebuke, I rebuke spirit of distraction. I rebuke it now in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke it now in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke it now in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, give me the grace to be able to focus. To be able to focus on my goals, on my purpose, on my destiny. Anything that wants to distract me, I ask you, Lord, to remove it. Send your angels to run away, to, to take away every blockage, every hindrance in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare with my mouth, I will run the race, the race of life with endurance, with endurance in the mighty name of Jesus. Because greater is he that inside of me than he that's in the world. Than he that's in the world. I will run the race with endurance. Because greater is he that's in me. I am now unstoppable. I am now unstoppable. Nothing can stop me. The trials of life cannot stop me. Demonic spirit cannot stop me. Principality cannot stop me. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I will arise from failure. I will arise from disappointment. Oh God, you didn't hear me. I will arise from disappointment. I will arise from failure. And I will run again. I will run again with endurance, with grace, with power. Heavenly Father, give me divine vitamin. Divine vitamin to give me strength, to empower me, to run the race, to run the race. And I declare with my mouth, I am more than conqueror. I am more than conqueror. I am victorious. I am, vi oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I am victorious. I am victorious. I am victorious in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. I am in Christ Jesus. I'm not running alone. He's running with me. His angels are ahead of me. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe that, shout amen. 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 Rapate pete. I renounce spirit of discouragement. I renounce spirit of distraction. I reject spirit of discouragement. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I bind spirit of heaviness. Spirit of heaviness. Call it by his name. Spirit of heaviness. I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. I will not be discouraged. I will run the race. Heavenly Father, put on me garment of praise. Garment of praise. Come on, somebody begin to praise him. Hey, yeah, 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 yo, ho, my jacka. Garment of praise. Hallelujah. Say, Heavenly Father, can I continue? Or start teaching. I feel the anointing. There's a shift in the spirit realm. You have to move with the shift. You shift with the shift. Move with the faith. In the mighty name of Jesus. And this will manifest in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say, Heavenly Father. Say, Lord Jesus. I thank you. I am standing on the rock. And Jesus is that rock, the immovable rock, the unshakable rock, the powerful rock. I'm standing, I am standing on the rock and Jesus is that rock. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the finished work of the cross. For the finished work of the cross, you pay for my healing. You pay for my deliverance. You pay for my blessings. 
You pay for my riches. You pay for my wealth. I stand on the rock and I declare, I am blessed. 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 Come on, tell your neighbor, I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. The favor of the Lord is upon me. I declare it shall be established. From today on, as I leave the church, favor will be looking for me. Favor will be waiting for me. In my house is waiting. And my job is waiting. It's waiting for me. Yo, 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 yo. Men, men, say, get for who? Let's say, get the head. Hey. 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 Yes. Glory. Say this. I lift up my eyes. I lift up my eyes. To the hill, where cometh my help? Father, today I ask you to issue divine help for me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Send divine help in the name of Jesus. Not divine assistant, but divine help in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare it. I am blessed. If you are sick, say, I am healed. Say, I am healed. I am healed. I am healed. Jesus paid the price. He took 39 stripes on his back for my healing. So sickness, go. And never come back. You are unlawful. You are unlawful. You are improper and you are forbidden because my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, of the Holy Ghost, of the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost refuse to share with you. If you cannot coexist, you must go. Sickness go. Infirmity go. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I am healed. I am healed. I am delivered. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am rich. I am financially rich. I am financially rich. Because Jesus paid the price. He paid the price for me. He became poor. That I might be rich. So spirit, power of poverty. Power of poverty. I break you in the name of Jesus. We learned this morning 10 a.m. in deliverance. Some things have to be broken. So power of poverty. I break you in the name of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus paid the price for my prosperity. So power of poverty. I break you in the name of Jesus. Somebody break it several times. Hey, I am rich. I am blessed. The favor of the Lord is upon me in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. Father, I bless you in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody bless God. Come on, somebody bless God. Come on, bless him. For one minute, one minute, one minute, everybody begin to bless God. One minute, come for me, come. One minute, one minute, one minute. One minute, one minute, one minute. The shout of the Lord. One minute, one minute. One minute. One minute. One minute. One minute. Come on, oh my bless him, bless him, bless him. Oh, it's upon you. It's upon you. 
I want to control your life. That want to influence your life. That want to change who you are. Makata. All right. Sit if you can sit. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus, I thank you. I thank you. One, one thing I'm going to tell you about this ministry is not a regular ministry. It's not a mechanical ministry. Spontaneous. God is the head of this church. When he decides to come in, allow him to come in. It's not, you know, mechanical. It has to be that way. That's why the devil stopped them. Because he knows the steps and the ways to be done. We serve a God. That's not a one way God. Amen. It's not a normal church. Deliverance and fivefold ministry. Fivefold ministry. Glory to God. Can I share with you for a few minutes? I will cut down my time. Let's go down to 20. Ah, 20 is short, but we have a lot of time. Let me share with you the topic. We started last week. The power of a dedicated life. of a dedicated life. And you can use this teaching for your spiritual life, of course, for your business, in everything that you do, especially for God. The life of a dedicated life. The power of a dedicated life. I gave you assignments to read Nehemiah 1, 2, 3, and 4. How many read? Yes, I'll give it again to read. Some people didn't read. But let's go to Nehemiah 4, 6 to 9. If I want to preach first, then we'll read. And then I'll begin to give some nuggets to help you to get into into this life. Amen? That will bring success to you. Amen? Nehemiah 4, 6 and 9. So we built the wall. Remember last week, the wall of Jerusalem collapsed. The enemy came in. And Jeremiah, I mean Nehemiah, decided to take up the project on his own to do what? To be rebuild the wall. Amen? And also this teaching, you can use it for your life if you want to rebuild your life. You know, if the enemy has came in and has caused havoc in your life, in your family, you know, or, or maybe years ago you used to have a lot of money, but the enemy came and steal all your money. It's a thief anyways. 
and you want to rebuild. This is a perfect message as well to rebuild. The book of Nehemiah, please go read that. Chapter 1, 2 to 5 is good. So we built the wall, and the entire wall was joined together up to its heart. Is height for the people had the mind to walk. The people had the mind to walk. Amen. Your strength is not in your might. Your strength is in your mind. To start any project, you must start from where? On your knee and in your mind. Do you have the mind to do the assignment? If the people don't have the mind to do an assignment or project, you will not work. You could be very big and go to the gym and pay 1,000 pounds. It's okay. But if the mind is not right, you will not be able to do the assignment. Can I tell you this? Sometimes we want the promise, we want the project. But I'm telling you, the mind is greater than the project. The mind is greater even than the promise. Most people want the promise, but their mind is not ready to possess the promise. Mind, oh God, mind is a terrible thing to lose. You must what? First of all, have the mind. Renew your mind. And that's what the Bible says, renew your mind. If I hear somebody saying something, that tells me what is in your mind. If I see you doing something, that tells me what was in your mind. The mind is terrible. The book tells us, the Bible tells us, that the people had the, war, the mind to walk. Even though they've been attacked by the enemy. Amen. Their mind was full of a mind of victory. Amen. That's why the devil always attacked our mind. They had the mind to do what? To walk. And they walk. Even though the enemy was talking. Amen. That's what the enemy talks. Do you know why? He wants to get to your mind. The enemy wants to tell you that you are weak. When God says you are strong, whose report are you going to believe? Mind is a terrible thing to do. The people had the mind to walk. They built to the half of his height. Now it happens. Now the enemy see that all their talk, talk, talk. Threat, threat, threat. They stop them. They continue to do what? To walk. To build. Then the Bible says, when Sabalat, Sambalat, Tobia, the Arabs, the Amorites, and the Ashadites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were being restored, to the, and the gaps were beginning to be closed, that they became very, very angry. And all of them conspired together to come and attack Jerusalem and create confusion. And create confusion. But the Bible said, nevertheless, we made our prayer to our God. And because of them, we set a watch against them day and night. They did not stop walking. The enemy was talking and threatening them. He wants them to stop. But they did not stop. They continued to do the work. The enemy said, we're going to come and cause com confusion. That's talk, talk, talk. They continued to work. Even Nehemiah said, even though we heard what they were saying, not only we were working, but we are also praying. He said, we made our prayer known to our God. Even though of the attack, you never want to stop praying. 
even when the attack increases. When the attack of the enemy increases, your prayer should increase. Your prayer level should be above the attack of the enemy. They continue to pray. Nehemiah was very dedicated. Nehemiah was a dedicated life. What is dedication? What is dedication? Dedication is the full commitment to the cause of no matter what, I will continue to do what I am doing. It is to continue without losing hope. It is to continue without losing hope. Yes, there are some perceivable elements. Please get this. There are some perceivable elements in the life of a dedicated person. When you see a dedicated person, there are few things that you have to see. If you are dedicated, these points have to be there. Number one, fixing your eyes on your goal. Fixing your eyes on your goal. Fixing your eyes on what you are called to do. Number one weapon of the enemy in the end time is distraction. Please note that. Number one is distraction. Because if the enemy can distract you, you will lose focus on your goal. And number one element in success of your goal or project or purpose is focus. If you can focus and learn how to tune off the outside noise, you will make it. There's a lot of noises coming to you that you're not going to make it. Stop listening to those voices. That is not the voice of the Lord. That you're not going to make it. That you are weak. That you're going to fail. That is not the voice of God. It's the voice of the enemy that wants to distract you from focusing on your assignment. Focus, focus, focus. If the enemy cannot distract you, you will be very, very successful. If you can focus on your goals, on your program, on your purpose, on what you are called to do, you're going to make it in life. When I was playing basketball, I always play better away game. Away. At home, I have a lot of support. You know, they cheer you. Hey, hey, go, Sammy Joe. Hey, I play, you know. Some players play good home because they have support. They share it there. They share it there. And they do all of those things. They make you feel good. I check my statistics. I always make more points away. You know why? I don't like noise. Hello? Noises. You telling me that I'm not going to make it provoke me to work harder. Provoke me to play Ada. And those people that are making noise, they're doing what they are called to do. The assignment is to provoke you not to play well. To get you upset, you miss all the shots. So when they shout it against me and scream it against me, there's something inside of me. I want to create that inside of you. That I rise up. That don't like defeat. That hate defeat. That wants to win when they shout them. 
Actually, basketball helped me a lot to focus. Now, when you are shooting, it's very free to there, there, something rise that I want to shut them up. I'm serious. Who shoot? Ooh, and if you miss it, they scream. Hey, they won. But I always do my best doing noise. I have learned how to tune off outside noises. Even though they are making noise, even though I can hear it, I focus more. I remember one time I was playing. We went to a, Texas. I went to New Mexico Middle Institute. We went to go play in Texas. Odessa. Larry Johnson was playing. I tried to play against him. Was playing. I was playing there. So they were mocking me. So one time I tried to dribble the ball. So mistakenly, the ball hit my leg and it went outside. They said, Ooh, this is no soccer. This is basketball. And this is America. One guy was screaming like that. If you want to play soccer, go back to Africa. Why did he say that? Man, it provokes me. So I came back again. I did the same thing. This time, I focused more. It didn't touch my leg. I went to the side, I come back, I showed it, he went. You know what I did? I made a mistake. I was upset. Then I screamed. I said, African can play basketball too. And the referee, boom. I was distracted. It gave me, the referee cannot give the spectator stick, take the gaffa, but he can give me. I'm going somewhere with this church. What the enemy tried to do to take you off of focus. And what should I have done? Even though I made, I made it, I shouldn't talk back to him. That's exactly what they wanted. To get you off the game. To get you upset. To get you mad. So you can leave the game. It's the same thing. Learn how to fix your eyes on the go. Distraction will come. Voices will be coming. Learn how to what? Tune it off. Even though the enemy is talking. Tune it off. And still play the game. There's a rule of the game. There's a rule of your purpose. And the rule is, is to focus on the goal. Say, I will focus on my goals, on my purpose. I will not allow distraction of the enemy. Even though I know the enemy is talking, I will focus because I am victorious in Christ Jesus. So what we need to learn to tune off the outside noise. You will hear. People even talk. But you focus on the goal. Let's go to Philippians 3. 13 and 14. Philippians 3, 13 and 14. He said, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. But one thing I know, forgetting those things which are behind. How can you focus? Paul is telling us, if you're holding on to your past, even your past can distract you from focusing. Amen? He said, one thing I do is what? Forgetting those things which are behind. And do what? And stretch forward to those things which are ahead. He said, I press towards the what? The goal. In other words, how can you overcome distraction by having a goal, purpose in your life? 
If you don't have purpose, the enemy will toss you to and fro. There must be what? Go. Purpose. What are you called to do in life? What is your goal? What is your assignment in ministry? Amen. What is your assignment for your family? Focus on the goal. Don't focus on yesterday failure. Yesterday failure. Don't focus on that. This is what Paul was telling us. Paul had a lot of issue in the past against Christians, against believers, against Christ. Now he's preaching for Christ. How can you move forward? The people that you want to prosecute, the people that you talk bad about them. Now I cannot move forward with all my past. And that's what he was saying. I know how to move forward. If I don't shut the door on yesterday, yesterday will come into today and will block my future. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We have to learn also our past. Nobody's perfect. We had our past. Amen. We have some failures in the, in, in the past. But we have to learn how to do what? Shut the door on yesterday failure. If not, it will come in today and you will not be able to reach forward. Guess what you do? It will pull you back in the future, in the past. Don't live in your past. Amen. There are three S. Remember that? Three S I gave you, number one. No. Of yesterday, living in the past. Scene of yesterday. Sorrow of sources of I know I have a lot of S. Mr. Stephen talking about deliverance. It's a deliverance minister. That's another S, but that's deliverance. We won't go there. Scene of what? Amen. And also sorrow of yesterday. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. We have to learn that grief management. If not, we might not be able to rise up from there and move forward in life. That's a tough one. Then also what? Success of yesterday. You know what I'm talking about? Some people, some athletes, they made so much money at their early age. Millions and millions and millions of dollars. But they didn't manage it well. They lost it. When you are in their midst, they don't talk about today. They don't talk about future. They only talk, oh, I used to own a yacht. I used to own a mansion. I have about seven cars. They dwell into what? Yesterday. Amen. Now there's no more money. Amen. They live in an apartment now. Mansion is gone. Big yacht is gone. Because of mismanagement. But God can still restore them. Amen. God can still give all of those things back. But what they need to do is to what? To shut the door on yesterday. My time is up. Oh my God. I'm just started feeling it. Oh my God. He said forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forward to those things which are a praise to the goal. A, what is your goal? Let me ask you, church. A praise toward the goal. If you don't have goal, what are you going to press to? What? There must be goal. There must be purpose. Amen. Glory to God. Goals for the church. Spiritual goal. Physical goal. Your finances. Goal. Financial goal. Amen. There must be goal. If not, you will dwell in yesterday. The first thing, shut the door on yesterday. Press towards your goal. What are your goals? Give me five more minutes. Then, after you shut the door on yesterday, pressing forward for the things which are ahead. 
What is ahead? What are you pursuing? Your purpose, your destiny, your God-given goal. And press to the goal for the price. Goals always have price. Goals always have reward. Goals always have blessing. Amen. It's attached to it. When you reach the goal, there's a price that you will receive. Paul said to the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. In other words, he was saying, even though I was a bad boy, even though I was against Christians, even though I prosecuted them, that was my yesterday. Hallelujah. And I shut the door on yesterday. I don't know your yesterday, but your future is brighter than your yesterday. We need to learn how to shut the door on yesterday so we can press forward. Greater is coming. More blessing is coming. More anointing is on the way. But we got to forward, focus on the future. The goal. What is your goal, church? Do you have a goal? Do you set a goal for yourself this year? Do you set a goal for your family? Do you set a goal, spiritual goal for yourself? Or you just waiting whatever comes, goes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Give one more scripture and I promise I will stop. Hebrews 12, I will spend time on there next week. Hebrews 12 too. It said, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. What does that mean? Jesus is our example. Don't take your eyes off of Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Don't listen to the voice of the enemy. He wants to distract you to take focus from Jesus. There's anointing in Jesus. Your blessing is in Jesus. Your greatness is in Jesus. Hallelujah. Everything is in Jesus. Focus on him. Turn off the noise of the enemy. Turn it off. You know, we say he talked, he talked, he talked. To be honest with you, I don't remember the last time he talked to me. But I'm not saying he's not talking. No, he didn't get it. No, he didn't get it. I don't honest. I'm serious. I don't remember the devil tell me something. But I'm not saying he's not talking. I'm so busy focusing on Jesus. I'm so busy reading the word of God. I'm so busy praying for the saint. I'm so busy working for my, take care of my family. He's talking, but I can hear. You know something? Some people can be talking to you, but you can't really hear what I'm saying. He's talking, but I don't, I don't hear. But they still talking, even screaming, but I can hear. Because I'm focusing to the author and the finisher of my faith. I'm focusing on Jesus. I'm focusing on my calling. I'm focusing on the saint of God. I'm focusing on my business. He's talking, but I can't hear him. Have you ever been in a situation, somebody talking to you, they talk to you, you can't, they can't hear you, they have to shake you to see, can you hear what I'm saying? It's talking, I'm not saying it's not talking, but I'm not hearing. It's a noise. Learn how to block it. Don't let it distract you. Hebrews 12 say what? Looking unto Jesus. When you look, you look with your eyes and your mind. It's a looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Listen to this. Who, for the joy that was set, where? Behind him? Beside him? Where? Before him, the joy was set before him. You know what I mean? That means Jesus 
had an inspiration. He has something that is looking towards to. An inspiration. You must have an inspiration in your life. Have something that you are pursuing. Have something that you want to do. There's a joy that was said before him. He endured. Can I stop there? He saw the price. The joy. That was what? That was the goal. Jesus was focusing on the goal. On the goal. Even though going to the cross was painful. Going to the cross is an agony. Going on the cross is a shame. Because if they crucify you on the cross, it's a shame. But the reason why he went, he didn't allow shame to stop him. Because there's a joy. I said there's a joy. I tell you there's a price that is attached to your goal. When you finish the goal, there's a reward. The Bible said despising the shame. He don't care about the shame. It's okay. I can be ashamed now. But the price that is set ahead of me, I will focus on the price. Even though I will be ashamed for a few minutes. Or I will be ashamed for a few days. But the blessing is greater. The joy is forever. The joy is forever. The blessing is greater than the shame. The joy is greater than the pain. The joy is greater than sickness. Jesus said, I am going to the cross. I have to focus and go on the cross. Even though the enemy want me to go, I will go. I will focus on the cross. Because there is a joy. What is the joy? The joy is he's going to spend time with us. Hey! 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 There's a joy. There's a joy. If you have a goal, you won't worry what people are saying. You will endure and run the race that is set before you. Say, I will endure. I will move forward. Despite the shame, despite the worthiness, even though the enemy is talking, I am moving forward. I'm going to follow Jesus. Jesus is my example. Hallelujah. Somebody say, yeah. 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 Look. Let me, give me two minutes. Two minutes. Oh, we will continue next week. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, is the first to receive the reward of faith. Is the honor of fame of faith. Are you hearing me? Is that looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith? Who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross because there's a joy. There was a blessing. There's a inheritance. Eternal inheritance. It was a joy. A joy of redemption. A joy that we're going to gather with him. Because if you don't go on the cross, we can't be with him. So the joy was there. That's why it's good. You must have a goal. You must have a purpose. And I'll tell you, reward is always associated with a goal. What is? He endured the cross, despising the shame. It was a shame. It was a shame on the cross. On that day, he came in the afternoon. Everybody's awake. And they crucify him with thieves. Jesus was not a thief. Even they released Barnabas, a notorious thief and a killer. Notorious murderer. 
they released him. And they put Jesus in his place. I said to myself, the devil didn't know what he was doing. If you know what he was doing, he won't let Jesus go on the cross. But I'm glad today that the devil didn't know what he was doing. I'm glad today that the devil missed it. That's why we are here. That's why we are here. But Jesus endured the cross and I will finish. I promise. Oh God. Despising the shame. And I sat down. That is another joy. I what? Sat down. At the right hand. Of the throne of God. Can I talk to you a little bit? About sitting down. A priest. Does not sit. A priest. Only sit. When the work is done. So Jesus finished the work. Finished the work. He paid the price for our healing, for our deliverance, for our miracles. Because a priest, he said, I priest, he said, I priest, he sat down. That means the work is done. The work is done. He paid the price for your deliverance. He paid the price for your healing. He paid the price for your miracle. He paid the price for your blessing. He paid the price for your creative miracle. He paid the price for the financial breakthrough. He already paid the price. That's why he was sitting. That's why he was sitting. Because the blessing of sitting, the joy is greater than the pain. The joy is greater than the shame. The joy is greater, is greater, is greater, is greater, is greater. So he sat down at the right hand. Oh, God, give me time. And where? At the right hand. Somebody say right hand. Say right hand. No left hand. On the right hand. Side of power. Right hand. Side of authority. Right hand. Side of dominion. Hey, Lord, go by Shaya. It's seated. The work is done. For your breakthrough is done. For your eternal life is done. That's why he endure the shame. If I were you, your goal also comes with trials. Your purpose also comes with tribulation. But I have a good news for you. The reward, I said the reward, I said the reward, I said the reward is greater than the shame. It's greater than the trial. It's greater than the simulation. If I were you, I would endure. If I were you, I would endure. I continue to run. To run the rest, the rest of life. I run, I run, I run, I run, I run. I know the shame. I know the shame. But I won't worry. I know there's a noise. People are talking. People are screaming. But I will turn it off. I will run. I will take off every obstacle. I will take off. Oh, I feel that preaching. Every weight. So I can run with endurance. Run the righteous. Run the righteous. Run the righteous. Hallelujah. That was a job that was set before you. If nothing is set before you, if you don't have go, you will be distracted. That was a job that was set before you. Despising the shame, you run. But the job is greater than the shame. The joy is greater than pain. Run with endurance. God is a joy that God has set before you. Come on, somebody clap your hands and give God praise. Come on, come on, clap your hands and give God praise. Come on, somebody clap your hands and give God praise. Come on, somebody clap your hands and give God praise. There's a joy that is set before you. Run the race of life. Run the race of life. Don't give up. 
You are on the winning side. I said, you are on the winning side. Take off the weight that's on your shoulder. Take off the weight that might slow you down. Whatever is the weight, take it off. Take it off. Take it off. Because you are ready. On your mark. Set. Go. Go. On your mark. On your mark. Let me back in the on your mind set are you ready are you ready to run the rest of life listen to me there will be challenges there will be challenges there will be attack the enemy will talk people will talk even you will use people that love you to talk against you but you just focus because he's trying to get to you so you can lose your focus. You need to learn how to tune off the outside noise. You need to learn before you run. Every weight. I've never seen an 100 meters dash with a backpack. Have you seen that before? They have their backpack. But I've seen they will come in with their backpack. Before they run, make it on the side. So you can run with speed. You can run with endurance. I prophesy from today on, you will begin to run the race of life. Now, with weight, you will run faster. You will run because there's a goal, there's a prize of the upward coming, there's a blessing. That there for you. Come on. Give him praise. 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 Take off the weight. Take off the weight. On your mark. On your mark. On your mark. Before you go on your mark, the first thing that you do to take off the weight. In verse 1 say, every weight that will ensnare you. Every weight that will trip you. Every weight that will slow you down. Take it off. Take it off. Also, I never see 100 meter runner with the eye heel. I like eye heel. Pastor Masha, that thing is so high. But Pastor Masha, you can run with your high heel. They will take off their shoes and put on a special shoe. I prophesy today God will give you a shoe. Sean, this is a nice shoe, but God's going to replace it. He's going to give you a shoe to run with speed. He's going to give you a shoe to run faster. And for you, I will say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am ready to run the rest, the rest of life. I know there will be challenges. I know there will be trials. I know there might be shame. But when I'm lighter, I can avoid them. I can avoid them. I can turn over them. Because I am lighter. I have no backpack. I have no high heels. I'm ready to run. Somebody say, yeah. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I feel the anointing. I feel the anointing to focus. And I declare, every spirit of distraction, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. Every voices that is not of God that is speaking, I shut you up. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you will hear the voice of the Lord. You will focus on your goals. I love it. There was a joy that is set before him. Paul said, because of the price of the upward calling of God. There's a price you're going to receive. There's a crown waiting for you in heaven. Somebody say amen. So spirit of distraction must go. Number one, to focus. Nehemiah focused. Even though they were asking. In the beginning, they were even angry. When Joshua he said he conspired against 
us when they realize this is enemy cannot stop it. They gather more. Said, nevertheless, even though we knew their plan, they want to bring in confusion and havoc. I'm not going to stop. We made our prayer known to our God. And because of them, you know what he said? You know what he said? The enemy increased. They didn't stop. They said, we know they are coming. But what we do, we make our prayer known to God. Amen. If we only do one thing, we did two things. We made what? Prayer, spiritual. And we did physical. You know what we did? We said, because of them. Because we know their plan. We set up watch. They the man just a prayer warrior. Day and night, so that the war would not cease. And prayer did not cease. So you have to continue to do the work because the enemy wants you to stop. In the rebuilding process or your goal, when you get to a point that you feel you can't go anymore, you have to change the way you do things. Business people will tell you that. Sometimes you reach the war, this is where you're going. The Bible says they reach the heart of the war. But the enemy increases because they see them building. You have to change the way you do things to get a suitable reward. You have to restructure the way you do things. You have to restructure your life. That's what Nehemiah did. If he didn't set the work, they were coming. They plan to come. They want to cause confusion. Are you hear what I'm saying? Say, okay, we know you are coming. We got that. And we have an answer for you. They didn't stop. They didn't stop. Sometimes you have to stop. Because you don't know the suitable reward. If you be doing it, doing it, it gets you to half. It will help you to finish it. That is changing our life. This is something that we need to do again and again and again. When you reach that But they didn't stop. They still continue. Amen. Come on, can we bless God and exalt His name? Can we bless God? Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' name. We're going to continue next week. I feel like I love to do praise and uh, the spirit of God was powerful. I'm going to continue with some points from this note. Fixing your eyes. What is your goal? What are you called to do? Watch and turn off every outside noises. Expect noises. Try to be like me. Let it provoke you to do better. It provokes you. Praise God. I will worship God more. I will move closer to God. Are you hearing me? Focus on the goal. Because there's a price. On the way to your goal. You know what's going help me? You have time. What's going help me? You know what's going help me? What's going help me? I expect attack. Some of you don't expect it. You thought everything would be smooth. Everything will be fine because I'm serving Jesus. 
that some people don't like you because you're serving Jesus. I expect it. Sometimes when you don't come, I'm disappointed. I expect it. I expect it. If I don't see any attack, I'll pause a little bit. Am I doing the right thing? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Man, I want to equip you, man. I expect it. If I'm doing God's work, I'm doing great work. I expect the devil to be angry. Don't you hear? The man said, we build it to the heart. And Sabala and Tobia and all those people, they were very angry. I like for the devil to be angry. I like him to be angry. So for me, if I don't expect that time, I will say, what am I doing? What am I doing? I don't know what time. <laughs> am I doing what I'm supposed to? I expect it. I prepare for it. Some of you don't expect it. You need to begin to prepare for it when you come. You are suffering. God will allow some things for you to do. God will allow some things for you to pray more, for you to fast more, for you not to play church anymore. Are you hearing what I'm saying? For you to pray some more. Amen. Even for you to teach your children the word of God. Because if they can't get you, they're going to your children. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I expect it. Expect it. You know why? Because you are doing a great work. Assignment seven days, night praying, all night and fasting and prayer. I've been saying to myself, say, No, when I pray, but we are here praying, shouldn't we? Begging, grieving, weeping. You know, I prepare them night prayer, night prayer. God, show me confirmation yesterday, seven days, all night. Amen. But greater is coming. Greater things from this church is coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Greater. I'm serious. Greater. You know what I did? I expect it. I've been expecting it. When I get confirmation, I'm not waiting next week. I'm starting tonight at midnight. I've been expecting it. I was saying, man, it's so late. I want to do it. Amen. Pastor did not even know came to me today. He said the Lord tell me I should sow a seed for growth. He didn't even know what I was what I was talking about. He said, Give me the seed. Oh, it's wonderful for me. Amen. Amen. Oh, oh God. I don't have to be fasting to God's way. Oh. But one of the points, let me just give it to you, Benito. One of the points of a dedicated life. They're ready to sacrifice. Is that when you get there for sacrifice? When I get, actually, I get the sacrifice. You know, God won't tell me to do all night fasting for seven days for nothing. He's a God of purpose. Something great is coming. I am you, He will my sacrifice. Part of dedication is sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Sacrifice. Sometimes you have to sacrifice breakfast and lunch. Only to be amen. We we sacrifice three three days meal, nine days meal. Sacrifice. Dedicated life always ready for sacrifice. I was ready for that sacrifice. Three times a day. Me and my father, my wife, and my father in heaven. Devil is in trouble. Come on, somebody bless God. I, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. There's more I will give you. There's more. There's more. Number two. No, I won't give you now. Next week. I didn't have enough time today. Oh. But number one, you can't forget. Fix your eyes on the. That means, first of all, you must know your. Amen. Your purpose. Because if you don't, you'll be cursed. Come on, are you blessed today?
Amen. Amen. I'm going to take our tithe and offering. We normally take it after the teaching and the preaching of the word. Amen. How many are excited? The same way you are excited before, continue to be excited. You have to be excited to give. Amen. So that this work will continue. We give our tithe, our, our, our offering. It help us to maintain what we need to do, the building and other things that we do for God. Amen. But the thing is, God will bless you as you do this. Amen. There's reward in giving as well. Amen. As you give and support the work of the Lord, the Lord will bless you. Especially in ministry with our power, healing, deliverance, salvation. Amen. God will bless you. If anybody need envelope, I want to encourage you, if you are not being given, I want to encourage you to start giving. It's good. Jesus said, it is what? Blessed to give than to receive. And when you give, you are supporting God's kingdom on earth. And as you do that, God will bless you and bless you and bless you exceedingly and abundantly. Uh, Friday, for those that were here, we were talking about finances, uh, how to maintain financial freedom. It's two ways. Number one, through your work. The job that you do, could be job, business, do it. Hard. Work hard. Amen? I know the pastor will tell you, just don't do work hard and expect miracle. Your miracle is in your hard work. Work hard. You know what the Bible said? It will bless the work of your what? Of your hand, your job, your business. Work hard and work smart. Mm. Amen. That's how you will bless it. Amen. You will receive promotion. Some people that you meet there, they will elevate you before them. Amen. Through your work. Number two, through your giving. Do your giving as you give and support the work of the Lord. God got your back. He won't let you lose that job because you are supporting his work on the earth. Amen. Because if he allowed the enemy to take your job, you can't give anymore. Is that right? So let's practice these things to give our ten. That's what the Bible says. We give our ten to the church to supply the work that we are doing. Amen. And what do we do with it? We do it to pay the church, pay the bills, pay the building, and pay other things that we have to do. Amen. Now, I'm a hard working man. I work. I own businesses. Amen. It's a good, it's a good man. Pastor, it's a good man. I don't know. Amen. I work. I have businesses. I'm very bad in overseas. I do. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's to help us here. And as you do that, the Lord will bless us exceedingly and abundantly. And I'm not saying it's not good for pastor to get paid. Bring pastor to get salary. Amen. 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 Pastor to get salary. Amen. Amen. I don't pay salary. Amen. But when church becomes a mega church, then I do salary. <laughs> if you give me, I will reject it. Shaka pataka. I'll take it. Amen. I'm not a father. Say, no, 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 don't give me that. You just do after service. Bring some money to me. You see if I won't take it. If you give me a dollar, I will bless you real good. I'll take it. You give me a thousand dollars, I will bless it. It was somebody after service Sunday. Somebody came to me. Oh, this was Friday, last Friday. The sister came to me. I have this money. The Lord just said I should give it to you. You get what I did? I didn't give it back. I didn't tell, no, 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 don't worry, keep it, no, no, no. Because God wants to bless her. I'm serious. Because people of God, the Bible says, those that live in the altar should eat at the altar. No! A laborer is worthy of the riches. I didn't even know her mom. I begin to bless her. Even when I stop speaking blessing, mm, my spirit inside will speak blessing. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? God told us to do that. Amen. See, I don't know, but God moving us to do that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So if you do it, I'll take it and I'll bless you really good. But I'm focusing now on our tithe and offering. It shouldn't go down. We want to keep it up so we can maintain this place. You know, after COVID, we were worshiping at the hotel. To leave the hotel and come to this big place, we have room to go. Down. That's a big jump. You think so? That's a big jump. What do you mean? It's... And there's so much restriction. Like today, you can do that. Next week, you can't. When you want to be, do events, man, the, the devil uses us to attack us. But we have to maintain it. Amen. We have to make it to ensure we maintain this, we will purchase our own soul. In Jesus' name. Amen. Do you have your time? You have an offering. I really want to bless you today. I want to make some declaration over your time, over your seed. Ways to give. Can we do that on the thing? You see, I'm fixing your eyes on your goal. Amen. Ways to give to everlasting life, you see. Everlasting life, get hug. Finance at everlasting life, get hug. hug. Give, 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 give. Amen. And as you do that, let me bless you. Come on, stand on your feet. Let me bless you. Before you bring it, let me bless you. Let me bless you. Really good. Really good. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I bless you for your sins. Are they coming to support? This great ministry, bringing their time, bringing their offering to support the work of the Lord. Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus to bless them exceedingly and abundantly in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The source of their income, Father, I pray it will never be shut down in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, bless them exceedingly and abundantly in the name of Jesus Christ. In blessing that you will bless them. In the name of Jesus. Uh, in favor, you will give them favor in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that the devourer will not be able to take away their businesses, to take away their job in the name of Jesus Christ. As they give to support this great ministry, anointed ministry, Father, it's an exchange. As they bring their physical, their swear to the altar, Father, the anointing of God upon my life and my wife's life it will be transferred in the name of Jesus Christ. It is an exchange when you bring and you give. It's an honor. You are not even giving to me or my wife. You are giving to God. Amen. You are giving to God because you are coming to give to God so we can use it for the furtherance of this kingdom on earth. Father, in the name of Jesus, their resources will never try in the name of Jesus Christ. I said their resources will never die in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If there's any power of poverty, I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. I release increase in their life. That you will bless them exceedingly. Because we are connected. And they give and support. There will be an exchange in the spirit realm. The spirit of God and the, 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 the healing anointing, uh, deliverance anointing, prophetic anointing over us will transfer to them in the name of Jesus. That the enemy would not be able to devour them in the name of Jesus Christ. Now I begin to declare. I declare prosperity. Oh, if you believe, you shout amen. I declare prosperity in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare God will send opportunities to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare expected and unexpected financial breakthrough to come to you now in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me come to you by fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Favor to come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not lack. Oh, you didn't hear me? I said you will not lack. You will not lose your job. Your business will not stop. God will give you more businesses. God will give you opportunities. God will send you divine help. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Young lion do suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord will never lack any good thing. You will not lack any good thing. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will live in big houses. You will possess good things. 
the Lord will provide for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because you have honor God. What you are doing when you bring your tithe and offering is an honor and obedience to God. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, he that obey, willingly and obey, will eat the fat of the land. You will eat the fat of this land. I said you will eat the fat of this land. You will eat the rich of America. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare, and if you don't know, America is not the blessing. You are blessed to America. You didn't hear me? You are blessed to America. Because what you possess. Do you know there's some judgment supposed to come upon America? God is holding on because of the saints. I'm telling you the truth. There's some things that have come to this nation. God upheld it because of the saints. I'm telling you. I read it recently. Remember, that's what I believe. Pre rapture. The fall of those judgment come. I truly believe the saints will be gone. I truly believe it. There's some things we have to see the sign. For the last seven years, I truly believe. Missing the point. This is teaching doctor of sin. You are teaching ministry as well. Not only healing, but you are teaching. It's balance. There's balance in the ministry. It's not just You don't remember Noah? They escaped. The one escaped is rapture. Don't study him. The one escaped is what? Rapture. Taking away before the flood. Then judgment. Amen. Remember, I know, don't rush. Remember, I give some definition. Remember, when those angels were going to Sodom, Abraham asked him, as the angel, and he asked God, I don't know who it was, either of them. They came. You know they were angels. But when they get to Sodom, they were men. Well, two of them left. One was still staying with Abraham talking. In the job of those angels, they were not angels. They were not angels. He asked him, if you have one righteous, if you have 50 righteous, will you destroy? That's what I'm telling you. There's some things that happened in this nation because of the sin God is upholding. I'm telling you. He said, if you find 50, will you? What did he say? He went down to 30 or 40. What did he say? He went down to how many? What did he say? He went down to how many? Is it got to one? He said, no. Abraham said something. But I know that this is my will. You will not destroy the wicked. The righteous of the righteous. That's not your nature. That's not your nature. You will not destroy the, the, the sin of the wicked. We are righteous. Don't say no. You are not. When you get there, is it by chance? The angel, they have to rush. Not Lot. But Lot and the family. How oh, quickly? You know what he said? He said, we cannot do this. He said, we cannot do this until you get out. Until you go. God will never destroy us. But everybody tell you that it's a life on the pit of hell. God will not destroy his people. 
It took them out. They rushed them out. Start going. Before we But I need to tell you that God will not destroy you. He loves you. You will escape. You will escape. Well, if I have to That's what they call me when I play basketball. No, I'm not doing that. Even if I do that, I can't. <laughs> Maybe it's so. If I provide attention, you know why? I need this for this. You know what? The Bible says if a man desire the office of a bishop, let it be. So I can wake up in the morning and say, hey, for today on, call me bishop. Desire. But apostle is sent by God himself. Appointed and anointed by God. And, uh, forgive me for today. I'm talking too much. That word apostle is apostolos. You know what they mean? One to look for the truth to go and tell people. Apostle of the Lord. He sent to tell people the truth. That's what apostolic ministry, the fruit of leading the kingdom means. Because they carry the anointing of the one that sent them. But a bishop is not desire. All right, let's take off. I give a lot of extra today. Amen. Come on, let, let's go for a few minutes. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We exalt your name. Amen. Amen. We have our seed. Amen. Amen. Oh, shall let's just bring it. I bless it already. I bless you. Bless your seed. Amen. That it will increase. Amen. Glory to God. Osha, are you here? Make sure you give something to support the work of the Lord. Amen. Don't just give something. If you have a job, give your time and give offering. That this work may continue. Amen. Come on. I mean, I've been blessed by this ministry. Amen. Amen. Let's give the support. That's what we do. Amen. Amen. Follow the direction of the usher at the back. I am a warrior, a Christian warrior. With me, where pie and I'm a right, and everybody sing. I am a warrior. A Christian warrior with me weapon, with me weapon, and I'm a writer. I am a warrior. I am a warrior. A Christian warrior with me weapon, with me weapon, and I'm a writer. And I'm a writer. Sing warrior, warrior. Everybody sing warrior, hey, warrior, warrior, I am a 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 The Lord bless you and keep you.
the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Let the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guide your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet, sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Let the rest, let it remain, and let it abide with you now and forevermore. And somebody share, shout, Amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you with the love of Christ.